Good morning. I'm sitting here in the back of my car uh, doing the Sunday school lesson today and uh, so welcome and it's actually Sunday morning because I was playing with Lucy and Harrison yesterday um, here uh, and I decided to do it out here because there's a nice breeze and it's not raining yet plus uh, my grandkids are playing inside and uh, you know what that means that there's um, it's not very quiet um, also I'd like to say thank you guys for your um, prayers for my um, daughter-in-law's family at the death of her mom last week um, she had been paralyzed many of you knew for the last 10 years and um, and she finally passed away after all that time and so the it's been a hard 10 years for the family but uh, certainly the last several weeks while she's been getting weaker have been very difficult and thank you for your prayers and your thoughts for uh, um, Jeremy and Caroline and her dad and sisters um, at, uh, at, her, at her mom's passing because obviously that's a very difficult time. Um, today it's uh, the reading is Exodus chapter 16 um, verses 1 through 16 and here it is. On the 15th day of the second month after the Israelites had escaped from Egypt, they left Elim and started through the western edge of the Sinai Desert in the direction of Mount Sinai. There in the desert they started complaining to Moses and Aaron, we wish the Lord had killed us in Egypt. When we lived there, we could at least sit down and eat all the bread and meat we wanted. But you have brought us out here into this desert where we're going to starve. Now. Uh, their whininess notwithstanding, uh, the reality is that there wasn't a whole lot of food in the desert and there were several thousand Israelites. So um, their complaint was well founded. But of course there's a way to complain and there's a way to, you know, just irritate people. Verse 4. The Lord said to Moses, I will send bread down from heaven like rain. Each day the people can go out and gather only enough for that day. That is how I will see if they obey me. But on the sixth day of each week they must gather and cook twice as much. And Aaron told the people this evening, you will know that the Lord was the one who rescued you from Egypt. And in the morning you will see his glorious power because he had heard your complaints against him. Um, and in the morning you'll see his glorious power because he had heard your complaints against him why should you grumble to us who are we and Moses continued you will know it is the Lord when he gives you meat each evening and more than enough bread each morning he really is the one you are complaining about not us we are nobodies but the Lord has heard your complaints Moses turned to Aaron and said bring the people together because the Lord has heard their complaints Aaron was speaking to them when everybody looked out to the desert and saw the bright glory of the Lord in the cloud. So the Lord was still there in the cloud. And they're, you know, still guiding him, still with him, you know, but they're hungry, so they're whining um, and complaining and grumbling, apparently. Um, and the Lord said to Moses, I have heard my people complain. Now tell them each evening they will have meat and each morning they will have enough bread. And that evening a lot of quails came and landed everywhere in the camp. And the next morning dew covered the ground. And after the dew was gone, the desert was covered with thin flakes that looked like frost. The people had never seen anything like it and they started asking each other, what is it? And Moses answered, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. And he orders you to gather about two quarts for each person in your family. That should be more than enough of the bread and um, now you notice in this translation uh, which is the um, uh, contemporary English version uh, they don't use the word manna like it does in the King James they just say what is it because uh, as I think you've heard before or maybe I mentioned it or somebody else but the Hebrew word for what is it is manna so the the Israelites didn't call it manna. They said, what is it? That was their, you know, 
thing. And so King James, when they translated that, instead of saying the Israelites came up and said, what is it? Said they called it manna because they didn't know what it was. Which, as long as you know, manna is the word that means what is it, that sentence makes sense. Otherwise, it sounds like they're naming it manna just to give it a name. Whereas that wasn't quite the case. Manna meant, you know, is the word for what is it. So that was the word. <laughs> Every time they said, you know, hey, do you have some what is it? Yeah, yeah, it's right in the cupboard there. But eat it quick before the worms get it. Um, so that's that was um, that was God's um, provision was the quails and the the flakes that if you keep reading it, it was like coriander um, but apparently it tasted sweet so it was just this dew and then it turned into flakes and then you'd eat it and it was nutritious I suppose um, now of course later on they start complaining because that's all they get is the man and the quails and they want some you know onions and variety but right now they're just starving so the manna and the quails are enough. And it struck me as I was reading that, that, um, you know, in a way it was natural that they were um, anxious because they didn't have enough food to eat. They really didn't. And you do need food. And, you know, pointing that out wasn't the problem. As a matter of fact, even grumbling about it, God said, no, I'm... I've, I got you. We're going to we're going to deal with it. And God provided for them there in the desert, which you know, I mean you've heard that every time you've heard this story that God's provision was for them. But what struck me uh this time especially reading it in this version was that um God said, "I'm going to provide for you. It's going to rain bread." but that they didn't immediately recognize it as God's provision or as bread. They weren't sure that that's what, that that's what they were getting. God gave them what they needed. God provided right then. But it wasn't immediately apparent that that's what was happening. And God's provision you know, was in God's timing and was um, enough for them, was sufficient for what they needed. It, it filled their need, did everything they needed. And it came when they asked for it. But they didn't recognize it initially. They had to have it pointed out. <laughs> they had to have it pointed out that God was providing for them. Um, which... I, I guess I've noticed in my own life that there have been times when God has provided um, for me, but not exactly what I was wanting or expecting. That God was on my side, and God was watching out for me, and you know what I what I wanted was one thing. What I needed was what God gave me, and it maybe took me a while to figure out that that's what God was providing for me, um, but not in the way that I necessarily would have wished. And I thought about that especially in terms of um, my medical condition, the, the Guillain-Barre that I've had now for what well, seems like ever, but it's only been since... Um, 2017, so, you know, two and a half years, three years come December, and um, I must say that I, what I wanted <laughs> was God to just have it go away, and when the, when the doctor gave me treatment, to have that just work immediately, and that none of that happened. That's not what God provided. God did provide. Um, other ways in which I could survive with it and that as I recover slowly that God's continuing to provide um, and that God's providing his uh, lesson 
of uh, of his healing in a different way than I'd hoped. And I I thought of that because I I was just reading a book that talked about the fact that um, a lot of what the early church did, there are stories of instant healing, but there were also stories in church history of the fact that um, the church took in the poor and the lame and uh, those who couldn't provide for themselves and did those things over long term and that that was healing as well that God was using the church for long-term healing as God's people practiced the art of being, being the kingdom and walking with people who needed help. And that throughout the early church, well, actually up to now, if you go through a lot of towns, um, there are many places that have um, hospitals like in Jacksonville, there's Methodist Hospital, and uh, you know there's a there's a Methodist Hospital in Atlanta, and Baptist hospitals and uh, hospitals named for Catholic saints, because the churches started those hospitals. Now, hospitals are way different now than they were, you know, back when they started them, and they're you know certainly big businesses and don't look a thing like they did. But the fact was that the churches started those hospitals as an expression of their desire to be a part of God's kingdom in long-term healing. Um, and that was the case with a lot of hospices, that the, you know God's healing would come as a way of helping people deal with their pain long-term because the, you know, a hospice is especially acknowledge the fact that we are going to die that's how our lives end, but that we can walk people with people through that, and that that's its own form of healing. That, uh, as E. Stanley Jones said, that that's, you know, God's ultimate healing is taking us to heaven to be with him. And uh, so that healing doesn't always look like um, what we would want, and in a sense that's what happened with my uh, son's mother-in-law was that ultimately she found healing by going home to be with Jesus um, where she won't be paralyzed anymore where she won't um, you know be in pain in that way so God has healed her and and in that sense it's fitting that God's people said what is it because they didn't recognize God's provision for them and I pray for me that God would open my eyes, that when I get manna, that my first thought wouldn't be, what is it, what, you know, looking around, but that I would be open enough to God's presence in my life that I would recognize it when God touches me, when God works through me, within me, um, and within the people around me, to provide that healing that I couldn't do for myself, which is uh, you know, cool that God does that and that, that God's grace extends through us to be the kingdom in that way, that we can be God's agents and that um, maybe the people around us, because they're blessed by whatever it is we're able to do, would, would then say, you know, what is it? And that we can point that out. <laughs> we can say. Here it is. This is this is how God's healing you. This is how God's helping you. This is how God's bringing His kingdom right here in this instance. He's touching you through His actions. So uh, my prayer is that God would open my eyes to recognize His bread when it comes. And that I wouldn't be the one saying, well, what, what, what is it? I, I want a loaf of bread falling. He said bread would fall from heaven. Of course it did. But it wasn't a loaf of marita bread that just, you know, clunked down. Um, or maybe we can't get marita bread anymore. I don't know. Now that that uh, bakery in Orlando closed and it doesn't smell like bread baking on the, that corner. <laughs>
which was one of the great things about you know that corner was uh, on I-4 on the uh, right where the Marina Bread Breakery was because it smelled like they were baking bread. But God didn't drop that down um, in a you know in a plastic bag all nice and sliced. It was um, different than that, and you know presumably exactly what they needed. So if uh, I think our prayer corporately needs to be, especially as we're asking God, how are we going to, uh, you know, build back up the church when it opens? How are we going to be the church? How have we been the church? And I've said it every week, I think, that you guys have been really great about participating and being there and continuing that. And now as it begins to, uh, you know, creak its way into maybe opening, maybe not, we're still not sure, but whatever that looks like, how are we going to be the church? How are we going to do it? And in that way, um, continue God's work individually and corporately. You know, now electronically and long distance and, you know, sending checks in by the mail and stuff like that. But you know, rebuilding and yet doing it to where we can feel confident and safe, it's still a, a mystery. And I'm hoping that as God provides, that we recognize God's provision and jump right on it. And then say, you know, we don't need to ask what it is. We were uh, awake and watching and expecting and that we saw it when it came. So there it is. Thank you guys. Appreciate your, as always. Um, sorry for the lateness here because it's uh, I'm not going to get it to Karen for another little while. But um, I thank you guys for your continued um, uh, watching and support and love. And I love you guys back. And we'll see you next week.